welcome back to another episode of Animation Pilgrimage, where we watch every theatrically released film in chronological order. Animated film. Animated film. I always forget <laughs> to say that part. And it's been a while since we've said that other bit, but we've been getting a lot of people asking us recently in some comments, like, will you do this film or will you do that film? And I guess it's just always a good idea every once in a while to just, just remind, uh, remind everybody people. that we do every animated film we can get our hands on in chronological order of release. So, yes. so if you're wondering if we'll cover this film or that film, you quick Google search, uh, find that movie, find out if it was released in theaters and what year it came out. Yeah. And that'll give you a good idea if we are going to cover it. Also in the description, we have our watch list. That watch list only covers the decade that we're in. Yes. So even if we don't have movies from like the 70s, 80s and on in that list, we haven't even gone into the research to look at that stuff yet. So mm -hmm. we won't really touch that until we get closer to the end of this, which we still have like another year before we get through this decade. Well, no, probably about half a year. Is going to take the 60s mm. a little more? Uh, yeah, overall, it's going to be like three-fourths of a year. Yeah. There's a lot of films in the 60s. Mm -hmm. But either way, uh, cool. what are we actually talking about today, then? Well, we are in 1961, and we are looking at the USSR's The Key. Okay. So uh, this is um, another really adorable Adorably animated film. I really liked this movie. Yeah, uh, I really, really liked the art aesthetic, especially. This is one. The Russian films have been ones. I feel like I say this every time where I'm like, the Russian films, the Russian films. <laughs> but, like, I haven't seen these, and so many of them are so close to each other that they, I can kind of lump them together. They kind of blend together sometimes. Mm -hmm. But this is a standout to me. And this yes. is one that I would go back to, I think. Like, I wouldn't mind watching this one again. You know what? I agree. I feel like I wouldn't mind watching this one in particular again. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, uh, it was about an hour long, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was about an hour long. And uh, should we just jump right into a... Uh... Summary? Summary? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So we start off with a father got all his baby gear because his child was just born and he's floating home on all those balloons because he's so happy and everyone's like, oh, he's the father. Are they making like all these dad, not dad jokes, but like jokes at a father's expense? Type of like things. a new father's expense mm -hmm. kind of thing. Which is a very, very common thing to do. Right. <laughs> From the start of this film, I was like, oh no. This, <laughs> this, this is not up my alley. This is dumb parenting whimsy stuff. Right. Uh, and the mom is like, no, you gotta do this. You gotta do that. You can't come in here. You gotta cover uh, your face. She is very, very naggy. And the first five, <laughs> ten minutes of this movie, I was like, oh no, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Just like... Oh, no, I don't like this lady. But they've had a new child, and uh, they're so happy in, that they have this new kid, and they get visited by three witches. Yeah. They, they, it's essentially like the, the Sleeping Beauty thing. They have three good fairies visit them to mm -hmm. bless their child. Yeah, and it's like definitely that's what they were going for type oh, yeah, of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the fairies give the child a golden key. No. Hmm? No. No? They give him a yarn ball. Oh, that's right. They give him a yarn ball. That's... Sorry. It's been a few days since we watched the movie. They give him a ball of yarn. Wow, you couldn't be more incorrect with what... <laughs> yep. They like, give him a ball of yarn. Yeah, you'd think it'd be a key because that's the name of the movie, The Key. Yeah, no, I'm getting my, my, my MacGuffins mixed up. Yeah, Pardon your plot me. MacGuffins. The key comes in later. Yeah. But no, they give him a yarn, a ball of yarn. And essentially, as long as this kid has this ball of yarn, he won't have any problems in life. He can go to, like, this heaven equivalent yeah, where goes, all of his worries will be fixed for him and he won't ever have to do a day of work. and mm -hmm. Early retirement, good things. Yeah. And also, they bless him with 
growing up really fast. Which that's okay. That's like I, a that's like a Ella Enchanted kind of fairy gift. That's just kind of terrible. It's like oh, this is totally a good thing, and they're like, wait, no, 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 because it doesn't stop at any point. He's just gonna grow up really fast and then die early. Right. They're. I mean, they're essentially cutting his life span in. Like he's got a into fifth a of it, twentieth of or something. Yeah, because he grows, he grows up. He's like age six by the end of the day or something. Yeah, which is crazy. But either way, they're not the only ones that come to uh, bless this new child with gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, the mother's father shows up, so the grandpa shows up, and uh, he's like, "Hey, new kid, I have some gifts as well." And my old toolbox. My toolbox full of these tools that I use for all my metalworking and stuff. Mm -hmm. And these are hard working tools. They're like, why are you giving a child tools? That's a really He has dumb... a ball of yarn. He doesn't need anything else. He's got life and luxury on the way. He doesn't need your old workman's tools. Mm -hmm. And the grandpa's like, that's nonsense. Yeah. No. And so the fairies, like, cast a spell on him to, like, turn him into, like, a propaganda poster. Yeah, this is straight up a propaganda poster. <laughs> um, and so they roll him up and take him home. Yeah, take him back to his house and leave him there. And they're like, all right, well, Grandpa's not going to be involved with the kid anymore. But it turns out, at this point, I'm like... Okay. Who's the main character who's here? Who's the main character here? And then it switches over to the grandpa, and it turns out he's the main character. At which point, I'm a bit conflicted because it's like, all right, the grandpa character is easily the most interesting. The character. most interesting character, and I like him the most. However, they also literally turned him into a propaganda poster. Uh huh. <laughs> and he definitely is pretty. A preachy? Pro preachy and propaganda-y. It's like, oh, is, I mean, I know the time period in the last couple of Russian films we've seen. Is this just another piece of propaganda? I don't know. I mean, it is. Like, it is. The propaganda the day, is definitely is. there. Yeah, end of the day, like, that's what it is. But I think this is the best integrated we've seen it. Yes. Where, like, you could take the propaganda, like... The propaganda doesn't have to be the message here. Yeah, but it's definitely it out of its, why it was made. Right. If you took this outside of its like time and context and showed this to a kid, like mm -hmm. they wouldn't recognize it. They wouldn't be indoctrinated on. and be like, "Communism is the way of life." <laughs> 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 yeah, like I. This is this is nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's subtle enough communism <laughs> that it's It flies okay. under the radar pretty yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, continuing on, it turns mm -hmm. out that the grandpa's tools are also alive because it's just kind of a weird fantastical world like that. Yeah. Either way, he's like he's a well pragmatic man that can break out of magic because he doesn't believe in bull honky like that or something. He's got a strong will. Yes. He's a strong willed man. And he's like, well, crap, my child or my grandchild is going to be given a layabout, a, a not, layabout and a, a, a not, not useful. Not contribute to society. Yeah, he's not going to contribute to society. So he goes to his best friend's house, who is a scientist who makes robots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love these the 60s biggest, robots. This is like the biggest area of the movie where it's like, aha, this is the padding in the film to make sure that this movie is an hour long. Yep. Aha. This movie was definitely made in the 60s. <laughs> yeah. Because you just look at these things like, yeah, this was... I and mean, it's got, besides like, the, the big computers, uh, and... giant like wall computers, uh -huh. and the robots have just that specific aesthetic. Oh yeah. Uh, it's like you know, it's like just showing these images. I'm sure you're just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. this is the time period for this. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just the general art style as a whole. This is very 60s. Oh yeah. And very it's much so. Very definitely a modern movie as compared to a lot of the. Or, like, the last couple Russian films we've seen? Mm-hmm. It's more contemporary. Yes, contemporary. That's the term for it. Yeah. Um, but either way, 
uh, he goes to his friends like, help, what am I supposed to do about my kid? And he's like, my grandkid. My grandkid. How am I supposed to know that he's going, like, I don't know where this dreamland is that he's going that's going to be all good for him. And, like, it was something about this ball of yarn is going to get him in. And the, uh, the scientist is like, I can fix this. I can reverse engineer it because you touched the ball and I can get the hair follicles <laughs> off of your hand. <laughs> yeah. There's because some real science, science. Some real science magic going on. Because science is the best thing in the world and is great and amazing and we should definitely do science. Yeah. Which is... All space race stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it. This is all... Sp this is a movie where science is good and magic is bad. Yeah. <laughs> which... I mean, this is the time period for it. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's not until we get later on that that idea flips in a lot of children's movies and idea, uh, like stuff. Well, it's just like a trope in general. Mm -hmm. I think that's more of an American thing. Okay. Like, like, that's a real American trope that, like, magic good, science bad. Yeah. The evil robot army... But we'll defeat it with fantastical magics. Right. Or the faith or whatever you want. Yeah. Non scientific. Insert your ideas. allegory for religion here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Either way, uh -huh. uh, he makes a new magic yarn ball that the grandpa is able to use to lead him to the witch's home of magical goodness. Yeah. I don't remember what they called this place. Valhalla. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> and it's just run by a bunch of grumpy old witches that all look the same. Um, and he goes in and... But, I mean, it's it's literally like a retirement... Like, that's what it makes me think of. It's like one of those poorly run yeah. retirement homes. Yeah, it is. Cause, but it takes in children because they go to school, but they're always on holiday. Yeah, they're always on summer break. Or, like, well... They have spring break, followed by summer break, followed by winter break. Yeah. Uh, spring, summer, winter, fall. Uh, the four, they're, <laughs> they're constantly on break. break. Yeah. And the grandpa's like, why would they have school if they're always not going to school? And the witch is like, well, you can't have break without school. <laughs> and it's like, well, I well, guess you can't argue with that. I can't argue with that <laughs> dumb logic. Um... <laughs> And, like, they're, as they're sitting there, they just see the children grow up, and then they go on a dance, and then they get paired up with a, like, a male-female couple. This is, this is yet again, like, where the propaganda really, like, comes in, because this is definitely, uh, bashing American culture. Mm-hmm. Like, hardcore. But, you know, as a millennial... <laughs> Anything bashing 50s American culture is kind of okay in my book. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm okay with this. Oh, and then you get you go to the dance with the girl, and then you sit on the bench, and then you don't kiss in public. Mm-hmm. And now you're old, and now you go retire, because that's how life works around here. Right, and, and then just you like, you go to prom, and then you're an old geezer. I'm because like, you're married now. That's some commentary. <laughs> And it's like, your life is gone. You don't need a life. So you don't work. You don't do the work. Yeah, they just sit them in rocking chairs. And, and they give them, they hand out cats. Yeah. <laughs> and then every now and again, someone dies and they just float away as a ghost and that's it. Yeah, they just like clean off the rocking chair and put somebody else new in it. I'm like, oh. Wow, that, uh. <sighs> that's melancholy. That's a factory line if I've ever seen one. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so either way, the grandpa's like, this is not where I'm allowing my kid to go. Grandkid. Grandkid. I keep saying that. <laughs> Whatever. So he runs out of there. They're like, wait, you're not. No, you can't run away from happiness. Get back here. It's like, this isn't my happiness. Yeah. Ah, and I'm a self-made man. Yes. <laughs> I built my future with my own two hands. I'm not going to do. No. He gives a little preachy speech. Runs out. And you're like, yay, go grandpa. <laughs> I see what you're doing here. So he goes back to his friend and like, I have this idea and I need your help. So. Essentially, we need to get rid of our kids, our grandkids yarn ball. No. 
I, essentially. He, he locks the place. Yeah, yeah. So he makes a lock and he locks up the gates to this heaven. Mm-hmm. By using, like, Paradise. a random child robot that his friend has made. <laughs> the child robot. It, like, it can regurgitate a few facts. Like, it knows the it, capital of some... Some country and, like, four times four or something. And, like, who who was the first blah, blah, blah. And it does, like, a chick chick <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. So they use this little robot to pretend to be a robot witch to get in and then locks the gate. Mm -hmm. And so the grandchild has like a montage while all this is going on and he's growing up and he's just an absolute brat because everything's just handed to him and he's like, I'm just going to go go to heaven now and I don't need anything because I just get what I want. Yeah. And so he gets there. And, and he's, he's like locked. awful to his parents. And you're just like, ugh, this is like the worst kid ever. Mm. It's like you've all met this spoiled brat before. It's like the the worst image of a child in your head come to life. Mm -hmm. So he gets to the place and it's locked and no one can open it. Uh-huh. And so he throws a tantrum. Throws a tantrum, of course. And the little robot is there and is like, this lock can only be opened with a key made by your own hands. And if you go to this specific guy, he can show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And this specific guy happens to be his grandpa, which he, he doesn't know about. Doesn't know is his grandpa. Yeah. So, or does he know he's his grandpa? And the grandpa reveals it to him like pretty quickly. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, you're my grandson. I can definitely show you how to do this. Mm -hmm. It's like, here, I can show you how to make a key. And he shows him how to make a key. And like, all right, now you try. And the kid's like, all right, fine, I can do this. And he starts going through the steps. And obviously he has never worked a day in his life and keeps messing up and hurting himself. Yeah. And so we just get this montage of him trying to make keys and him getting hurt. And it's really cathartic, honestly. It is really, really cathartic. As as a person who who makes things with their own hands... Yeah. It is cathartic watching a brat who expects everybody to just hand him what he wants have to make something with his own two hands, mm -hmm. failing at it, and continuing to just keep going at it until he can finally do it. Yes, like, it's like practice, <sighs> practice is what gives you the key <laughs> to get your happiness. Mm -hmm. Hard work is the key. Yeah. That is the message of this movie. And, you know, like, <laughs> it definitely doesn't come without its problematic side, but mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. So to wrap this movie up, the kid eventually makes his key after, like, multiple attempts. And he's like, well, I guess I'm going to happiness now. And the grandpa's like, yep, I guess you are. And the kid's just like, all right, well... Bye. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, waffling on the idea of whether he actually wants to go or not, or just stay with his grandpa. Yeah. But he leaves. In the meantime, on a different plot point that we haven't even brought up yet, <laughs> the scientist who made the robots made a poet robot <laughs> who his job is literally just to make bad poetry so no one else has to. Yeah, it's it's literally like bad poetry you find. It's specifically like bad poetry for kids. Mhm. Mm is the robot that he made? And I think the grandpa at one point is like, "Why'd you make this?" And he's like, "So nobody else has to." Yeah. <laughs> but either way, it runs off at one point and tries to become a poet, but apparent like there's some commentary that people that write poetry are just drunkards and terrible people or something? Well, there's definitely a commentary that, like, those in the art field aren't really contributing anything to society. Yeah, yeah. Either way... Which is ironic, considering this is an animated film. Yeah. It's so I, weird. Like, um... You realize you are an art form yourself. Whatever. Um, so the robot... Gets drunk on oil, I guess. Yeah. As you do with old robots. 
Uh, he comes back and he totally just like breaks the child robot by backhanding it. Yeah, yeah, it just suddenly gets violent and he's like, bam! And like, whoa! And, and the so, child robot's dying. And I guess another plot point we didn't bring up earlier is mm -hmm. uh, the grandpa character is like a good guy with a mechanic, essentially. Yeah. Like he knows metal working and he can fix all the robots. Even though the scientist created them, he doesn't know how to fix them. Right. Which is a strange concept. But whatever. Roll with it. <laughs> Roll with it. So the scientist is like, oh no, my baby robot. I need to run across town. To, to grandpa. To grandpa. When the robot first got broken, he just like picked it up and started sprinting. And both of us were like, wait, what? Where is he going? Where is he going? He runs out of the house. We're like, oh, they're taking it to the grandpa character, aren't they? Yeah. Because this one point that was brought up. At the beginning of the film. Well, yeah, because the grandpa had come over to fix something. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm He fixed the poet robot, of all things. Yeah. So they take him over to the grandpa, and the grandpa's like, all right, I'll just fix the thing's heart. Ugh, my eyes are bad. I can't see this anymore. I can't, I can't tell what I'm doing. But thankfully, the grandchild has come back. He's like, I don't want to go to paradise. I want to stay with you, grandpa. And he has good eyes, so he's able to fix the heart. And they're like, all right, what is the truth of happiness? Or like, what is the what is the key to happiness or something? They, yeah, they asked the child robot that. I mean, they also, like earlier in the movie, they asked the robots as a whole what the key to happiness is. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, what is the key to happiness? And the key to happiness is... And then, like, the whole cast walks into the screen. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally like a, everyone like a, just walks in. Uh, curtain call kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And happiness is... Contributing to society. society? Or something like that. So, something like that. Jeez, I mean, we watched this movie... They gave us the key to happiness and we forgot it, Sean. I know, I feel really bad because we just watched this movie a few days ago and I've already forgotten what the specific wording was. I just remember them all coming out onto screen. I was too busy they, laughing yeah, at that. Yeah, they give the line and I'm just like, oh man, you were There's doing... There's the money shot. You were doing so well with the communist propaganda and then you just had to wrap it all up with it, didn't you? Or you mean really good with not shoving the communist right, propaganda right. in there. And then the movie ends with communism, everybody works, and that's happiness. Yeah, like, oh, well. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> Fine. It's good. Close enough. Good job, guys. Uh, but yeah, other than like that last bit, the overall message of this movie is a good one. I would. Yeah, like as Especially long for as, us. Yeah, as long as you don't... I guess, like, take it to, like, everything in this film is something that's like, okay, yeah, but you kind of need to take that with a little grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it definitely idealizes this hard work um, idea a little bit too much, you know? <laughs> but it's also, like, a, a kid's film. It's a kid's film. <laughs> and, yeah, the idea, or like, we're really, Tennille and I especially are into the idea of hard work is how it's, is like that's how you're going to achieve your goals. You, you have to do you it. You need a lot of other factors to make it work, but mm -hmm. hard work's going to take you a long way. It's like that's so it's that's really, the basis of how you're going to get to what you want. Yeah, and it's and it's really nice to see a movie have that kind of message. And I also really like a movie that's focused on an older guy. Mm -hmm. And I really liked this grandpa character. I mean, that being said, especially <laughs> contrasting to everyone else who's terrible yes. except for the scientist and the robots and the scientist is also another old man yeah that's the thing about these russian films they have this strange fascination with either old guys mm -hmm. or young girls yeah They're like that that's pretty much those are your two cast members or the young beautiful man like like child because mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of, like, young boys be main characters, yes. too. It's like, you got the child, or specifically grandpa, or the prince or princess character. Right. That's your only choices when it comes to Russian films. There's no as other... Protagonist. As if protagonist. You're, if you're anywhere in the middle of those, you're probably <laughs> a bad person. <laughs> yeah, but just, like, a lot of these 
Russian films in general just have the wise grandpa character. Even if yeah. it's not the protagonist, there's just like a wise grandpa or wise old man character that shows up and is gentle and kind and helpful to whoever the protagonist actually is. Mm -hmm. It's it's an interesting That's why I think this trope, this grandpa was a bit more refreshing to me because most of the old men in these movies have been like very hardy, kind, hardy, gentle, kind like a little boisterous mm -hmm. maybe or like a little like like they might they're like very make jovial jokes at your expense a little mm -hmm. bit but they're very they're still very kind and like mm -hmm. like approachable. Whereas but no, this, this grandpa was like was nope. more like Matter of fact, you Very get stuff of, done. Yeah, exactly. Which I was like, that's a nice change of pace. I, mm -hmm. I like this guy. Yeah. Anyway, though, I think that wraps it up for this film. Uh, I definitely think Sean and I both recommend it. Yes, I d yes, definitely recommend this one. Of the three last films we've watched, which are obviously paid for by the Russian government to make communism is a good thing movies, <laughs> this was the... This is the one I liked the most. Yeah, this is the best executed, and the communist uh, subtone, uh, subtext subtext is the least most visible. Most bearable. Yes. I, I wouldn't say least visible because it's still pretty obvious. Yeah. But like, I think it's the best integrated into its story, into something more palatable for our senses. Yeah, that's probably a good way to put it. Anyway, next week is... An interesting film that I'm sure a lot of you mm. are interested In, to hear about. Uh, and you might have, you've, I don't know how many people have seen this film. Yeah, I don't know because it's really hard to get a hold of. Yes. But we were able to rent it online and we've actually already watched it. So next week, join us for UPA's Gay Paris. Purry. Purry. <laughs> И все это отдает людям. И все это отдает людям. Да-да, отдает людям.